Namaste, dear friends. I'm Monique Trinity Rose, and here we are offering up the ritual embodiment moon divination for the full moon in Virgo of February 2019. So I'm going to give you, as always, a brief overview of just the astrology, the basic astrology of this full moon, and then I will talk about the card that I drew from our Ritual Embodiment Divination deck and how those frequencies co-inform to give a little bit of inspiration and illumination into what is happening energetically right now and what we can contemplate, what we can seed, what we can emanate, what can emerge from us in the fullness of this moon. So the full moon in Virgo and it's a zero degree full moon. So this is a very potent, of course, earth energy. And Virgo is a lot around the grounded, earthly, day-to-day -day kind of daily routines, maintenance, um, the earthly plane, how we are moving through our daily life in the 3D and in, in the seemingly mundane activities of our lives. So Within that, we drew a card from our Ritual Embodiment deck. And again, what this is, if you've never watched one of these videos before, this is a archetypal deck that plays upon the foundational archetypes within the Ritual Embodiment format, which is a yoga dance embodiment format in which we actually embody and evoke and familiarize ourselves with this basic pantheon of seven primary archetypes that play out through humanity that oftentimes we in our modern culture have become really um, disassociated from. We have gone into either repressive or reactive states within the archetypal realms and needless to say it has caused great disruption in our reality and in our self-realization in the way that we show up in the world, in the way that we can attract and navigate in relationship, in the way that we manifest in our life and in our careers and in our families. So the idea here is through ritual embodiment, we can actually bring back balance and full, whole, experiential integration of these foundational archetypal forms of humanity within ourselves so that we can then cultivate more self-love, more self-knowledge and wisdom, and then offer up that love and wisdom to the outer world. And one of the things that we really recognize deeply within the ritual embodiment format is that the seemingly outer world is truly a holographic projection of our inner landscape, of where we are in our psychic, emotional, and even physical, because our physical bodies are essentially the map of our energetic bodies the 3D map of our energetic bodies, that essentially everything that we experience in our lives has in some way been co-created, been magnetized, been seeded within our psyche. And that happens from a karmic level, some people might say, and I definitely feel that it happens over the course of multiple lifetimes. It also plays out in relationship to what happens to and through us in our childhood. There's a big, big piece within all of that. And essentially throughout the course of this karmic play, we develop patterns within how we relate to or do not relate to these archetypal frequencies. And then as there are blocks and rifts and repressions within our own inner spectrum, then that begins to manifest in our outer world, in our relationships, and in the things that we are drawn to, the things that we like, and the things that we have a lot of judgment on and that we might even hate or feel violence or enact violence towards. So without going too deep down that rabbit hole, that's what we're doing here is bringing balance within our own inner landscape so that we can have compassion and understanding and grace in how we move in the world and with other people. 
So that was a bit of a mouthful, but it's all very relevant. So the card that we drew for this particular full moon in Virgo is the repressive dynamic ally of the queen archetype. So we have all of the archetypes in their centered balance state, and then they have a sort of pendulum swing reactive state and a repressive state. And the repressive state of the queen is we call her the slave or the sheep, depending on how you want to term it. So essentially what that card is pointing towards is that perhaps somewhere in our lives, in our experience, in the now, we have been falling into a pendulum swing of a repression of our queen energy, which is located in the chakra of the throat, the throat chakra. So the queen is how we hold and express and, and bring grace and coherency to our queendom. It is how we are able to utilize our self-knowledge, our intentions, our goals, that which we want, that which we do not want, what our boundaries are, and how we are able to express, manifest, and exert that self-knowledge into the world. So it's how we can communicate with other people and how we can manifest, bring into the 3D what we want, what we're cultivating, what we're creating in our lives, what does not work for us, and be able to stand in poise, in sovereignty, in self-knowledge and wisdom, as well as respect and integrity within uh, how we interface with other people and their needs and boundaries as well. So the balanced queen is not dominating, is not trying to force her desires and her boundaries upon the world, which is essentially the reactive form of queen. Um, and so then the opposite of that is the repressive queen where we have pushed away our ability to know and to express and exert our needs, wants, desires, manifestations, boundaries in the world. So where is it showing up that perhaps somewhere in our lives right now, we are not standing up into our queendom, into our poise, into that grace that is the balanced queen and making our realities the way that we choose, the way that is aligned for us. So how that can relate to this Virgo energy is so queen is up here virgo is earth is grounded is rooted so what i see happening here is we are being asked to step into our queendom more fully in the very earthly mundane day-to-day -day reality of our lives so it's not this expression of queen where it's like, oh, I have to be, you know, wearing my elegant ball gown and have my nails done and be, you know, going and presenting myself to the world in this way. It's how are you making your coffee in the morning the way that you want it? How are you navigating with your children, with your husband, with your family, whatever that looks like? How are you navigating in the day-to-day, nitty-gritty, what's going on in the reality of your ongoing life? How are you holding that poise? How are you expressing your needs? How are you taking care of yourself in a way that is honoring of where you are being depleted, of where you are needing to be filled, and of what is going to make you feel most centered and capable and compassionate so that you can then create your world in all of the dynamics that it wants to be created and hold that place of queendom within your reality. 
So where are you maybe getting trampled on? Where are you not saying, you know what, I really need some space right now. And so I'm going to go take five minutes. I will be right back. I love you so much. Here's something to play with or whatever that looks like. How are you not meeting that true authentic state of your own queendom in the day-to-day, -day, very earthly domain of your life? So when getting into how we can bring about, how we can evoke a more balanced, uh, represented state of our queendom, in fact, I'm going to take a little sip of my tea. I've got my little Turkish teacup that felt very queenly today. Um, so in our ritual embodiment work, we are not just thinking, meditating on, thinking about what is going on in our lives, but we are actually evoking the frequencies within our bodies and our minds and doing practices to be able to light the fire or soothe and balance and bring into a coherent state, flux state that's of course always dynamically changing in the frequencies at hand. So. One practice that I will suggest in a very tangible way for right now in the amplification of this full moon is to take some time to ground into the earth, to create spaciousness and stillness, to be able to hear and receive the wisdom of what this means for you. And a really great way of grounding is a practice called grounding that's gaining a lot of momentum and understanding in the world right now which is super important and it's literally a practice where you take your shoes and your socks off and you go outside into the world and you put your feet on the earth your bare feet on the earth no shoes rubber soles in between there's a whole lot that can be said about grounding but all I'll say about it right now is that it helps us dispel and disperse electromagnetic energy. It helps purify our systems. It helps connect us back into the natural cycles of the earth. And the irony of this world that we live in is we have been taught that essentially the earth is, is a burden and something to be conquered or is like dirty and scary. The, the wild earth, right, is something that we want to kind of like disassociate from and try to medicate ourselves to not have to deal with the dynamics of the earth, as well as that the sun, the sun energy is cancerous and will give you cancer and will give you sunburns and we need to protect ourselves from that. And the truth of the matter is that the earth and the sun are the foundational dualistic duality frequencies that are our medicine, that are ourselves and who we are. That the earth is medicine, is healing, is imperative to who we are as primal human beings, aspects, cells of the earth that the sun is also vital life energy that is bringing us vitality, that is purifying our systems, that actually eradicates cancer and other disease. So I feel a big hurdle that we're, that we're implementing here is reconnecting to the earth and the sun energies in a respectful balancing way. So put your feet on the earth, go ground out, put your feet on the earth, tune in you don't have to go super woo and like you know be burning sage while you do it if you don't want to but just get your feet on the earth and while you do that a practice that you can do to evoke the archetypal queen energy if you feel that there's areas that that has been repressed in your life so we're going to do a mudra in with our hands it is tamra chuda so we have the middle finger coming down to the thumb and the other fingers are just lightly curling, right? So this we can do on both hands. We're going to bring one hand underneath, 
kind of supporting our elbow and the other hand to the chin with the pointer finger just lightly coming to the chin. And if you can, be standing on the earth or be sitting on the earth and just put your feet down on the earth. Sit up nice and tall and take a few nice deep breaths here just in the poise, the regality, the wisdom of just this posture in of itself. Nice, deep, smooth breaths. Feel yourself grounding into the earth. Simultaneously feel your spine lengthening up. Feel that poise, that queen-like quality, that regality, that sovereignty, that wisdom, that grace as it begins to emanate through us. And this is can be considered ritual theater at first. At first it may seem and feel false if it's a foreign frequency to you, but after a while it will just become a part of you. So it's a practice, right? And then from here, in order to open our throat chakras, we're going to sound the seed syllable for the throat chakra, which is HAM, H-A-M. So we can do this simple practice of taking this mudra and this stance, feet on the earth, and begin to just sound with the intention of opening our throats and being able to vocalize and speak with clarity, with grace and compassion, our needs, wants, desires, and boundaries, what we are creating ourselves and the world that we're in to be. So just take a nice deep inhale. Ha. As you inhale, reverse the arms. Um. And one more time for now. Sitting up tall. yourself to do that in your own practice, maybe daily for the week or the few days around this full moon, opening up the throat, getting clear, grounding into the earth, getting clear on how we can make little micro adjustments, little pivots in our day-to-day -day life to be able to stand more fully and fully inhabit the queen energy that we are destined to become in this hero's journey that we're in. And as you do that practice, you can then start turning that hum sounding into actual words if you like. You can sing or you can then start to learn how to say, yes, I want this, or no, I do not know. And being able to say with clarity what it is that you are wanting, what it is that you don't want, what you are manifesting and evoking with clarity, with, with poise, without having to control or demand, sitting so powerfully in your balanced queen that your intention and your clear languaging of that intention is enough to ripple out into the hologram and create the world that you are visioning, that you desire, that is anchored in your heart. So I hope that is helpful for you. If you're interested in doing more ritual embodiment practices with me, go to moniquetrinityrose.com. You can read more about the practice and other practices that I do there. Sign up for the newsletter so you can hear about workshops and online courses as they arise. And really take this full moon as an opportunity to stand in that power, stand in that grace, get to know yourself a little bit better and allow that beauty and wisdom to ripple out into the world. Thank you, sisters. Have a beautiful full moon and I'll talk to you next time.